Pastor Chris at True Life Faith. Hope you've had a great day. Hope you've had a great weekend. Today, the sermon that I have prepared to preach tonight has been something that I can't shake from my mind. It's been on my mind for the past couple of days, and it's almost like a, a little kid tugging on your shirt and like, pull, uh, pick me, pick me. It's been tugging at me that I knew I had to do a, a message on this. And I can't. I'll go, I'll go to sleep. I'll lay down, and I'm thinking about it. When I wake up, it's still on my mind uh, that I, I just can't get rid of. And it, that is praising God in the storm, praising Him in the midst of the storm. Amen? No matter what we face, praise God in the storm. Praise Him in the storm. Amen? If you don't know, that is the title of this sermon, Praise Him in the Storm. Sometimes in our lives when we're going through some some of the toughest battles, the worst of circumstances, it's hard for us to keep praising Him in this storm, right? Sometimes when you've got all this stuff coming at you, it's hard to keep praising Him in the storm because we have what? We have some earthly eyes that likes to see things carnally, all right? The way things are right there at the moment. That's how we see it. We, sometimes we can't see the victory. We are blinded by our own eyesight because that's what we're focusing on. We tend to only see flesh. We tend to only see what's around us, that moment. And you're thinking, yeah, well, that's why we have eyes to see what's going on around us. And while that is true, we have to be able to open them up and look past the earthly things, the physical things, the carnal things. Amen? Our eyes with the faith that we have, we see the sickness. We see the bills that's piling up that we can't pay. We see the broken car sitting out in the backyard. We see the struggle of our jobs. Amen? We tend to focus on all these things, but we forget to focus on the one that can solve all the things. Amen? We forget the one that can, prov that can provide money to pay the bills. We forget the, ones that, the one that can provide to fix the car. Amen? To heal the sickness, to deliver. We forget to look at the one. We lose our focus on the one that can calm the storm in our life. We as Christians tend to forget praising him in the storm. Yeah, I said that. We as Christians, we tend to forget that. And become the ones focused on the storms in our own lives. In our times of struggle. Amen? In our times of hardship, we tend to not focus on only on our only help. We tend not to focus on him. We're going to read uh, two verses real quick, and I've got two songs I want to sing tonight. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms 121. Verses 1 through 2 is what we're going to be reading. And if you haven't, say amen. Amen. Witness getting in our, on our phone right now. Starting in verse 1, it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Somebody say, my help comes from the Lord. Which made heaven and earth. If you bow your heads, we're going to pray. Lord, we ask you, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing today. God, I ask that you will use this sermon let it be a seed planted in someone's life today, God, that they will start to praise you in the midst of their storms, that they will praise you in the midst of their circumstances, that they will praise you when, they, when trials and tribulations come their way, Lord, that we will know to turn and put our faith and trust in you, Lord. Anybody, Lord, that's under the sound of my voice at this time, God, I ask that you will touch them, Lord. Use them today for your glory. We love you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Just ain't pray. The church say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Crispy, you can go ahead and Press it play on that first song.
still go free. With him I have salvation. With him I am free. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Amen. That I could still go free. Thank you, Christopher, very much. You did a great job working the sound. I appreciate it. I hope y'all got some out of those songs today. I'll tell you that. I could still go free. I'm telling you, I felt them right then and there. But in the opening words of the song, I praise you in the storm, what does it say? It says, I was sure by now, God, you would have reached down and wiped the tears away, you know, just stepped in and saved the day. That's the first words, the first lines of that song that we sang, the first song. And here I am once again, I say amen, but yet it's still raining. How many times have you said, God, I need you. Lord, when are you going to take the rain away? And then you say amen and it's still raining. How many times have you done that? How many times have you been there? And this is how we like to think that this is how things are when we look with the eyes that we are given, when we look with our earthly eyes and not the eyes of God. Amen? We don't look through the eyes of God. We think that we are abandoned when the storms hit. We feel like we're going through the storms on the sea all along, that we're on this boat that's being tossed to and fro with the waves beating down and the rain coming and the wind blowing. We feel like we're out there all by ourselves. Have you ever been there before? Am I the only one that's willing to tell the truth? Amen? Think to it. Think about it to yourself at home. Have you ever been there and you thought you were all alone? You thought you were by yourself? And we feel like there's no way out. We feel like we're always going to be alone, that we're out there at sea, and that we feel like we're going to perish. We feel like we're going to die. We feel like things are over for us at that very moment. In our fleshly lives, we have a hard time looking upon the one that brings us peace, that brings us the calm, amen? We forget who to look to. We forget the one, the master of the wind. We forget about him. We have the mindset that no matter what happens, it's over, right? Sometimes we think like that. It's okay, Christian, if you think like that. But we have to get that mindset that no matter what happens, we're going to keep on shouting. Amen? No matter what happens, we're going to keep on trusting in the Lord. We're going to keep on believing in the Lord. Amen? Trusting and believing that we are going to praise Him. Somebody say praise Him. Amen. In the storm. No matter what we face, that we're going to constantly praise Him in the storm. Through sickness and health, we're going to praise Him. Amen? If you want to follow along in your Bible, so Matthew chapter 14. And this is scripture, there's a story in this Bible that I love so much that I use it a lot, and I'm going to keep on using it as long as True Life Ways exist. Whether we're uh, 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 online ministry for the rest of our time, or we end up having a building after this Rona quits hitting everybody. Amen? But I'm going to constantly use this scripture, Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to start at verse 22. Some of you already know where this, what this is. Verses 22 through 31 is what we're going to be reading tonight. And starting at verse 22, it says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Somebody say contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Nobody wants to see no ghosts walking on the sea to them. Amen. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Amen. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee. Come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Amen. This is scripture we use a lot. And I love this scripture. 
You have here. You have. You know. You have been a Peter at some point in your life. Amen. You want to have. You want to be the one that has this great faith that you're going to step out onto the boat, that you're going to step out onto the waves, then you're going to walk on to Jesus. Amen. You're going to walk upon the water, but then all of a sudden you find yourself looking at all the waves around you, that the wind's blowing real bad. You might see some lightning streaks in the back, in the, in, in, in the back, in the distance. Amen. You might see all this stuff. That you see, you can feel the rain just pouring down on you. And then all of a sudden you start to lose your focus on Jesus. Amen? And then all of a sudden you find yourself starting to sink. That's what we see in this verse here. Verse 30. He began to sink when he was paying attention to all the stuff that's going on around him. All of a sudden he wasn't able to walk upon the water to Jesus. He began to sink in the water. And that's exactly where we find ourselves sometimes. You find yourself beginning to sink. When we stop focusing on the one that can calm the stuff around us, when we become overwhelmed by the stuff around us, that's when we begin to drown. Amen. We begin to drown in our burdens. We begin to get we begin to drown in our problems, our situations. The bills become so overwhelming we don't think we can get them paid. The cars broke down again. We become so overwhelmed that we begin to sink instead of focusing on the one. They can fix the problem. We, we don't focus on what we need to be focusing on. No matter what may happen, no matter what is going on around you, I'm going to believe in the one that calms the storm. I'm going to claim victory in the name of Jesus Christ. I am victorious. I will not lose to this giant that stands before me. <coughs> Excuse me. I am not going to lose to the waves that's crashing all around me. Amen. I'm not going to lose due to the circumstance surrounding me. I am going to trust in the Lord and not lean on my own understanding. You know, we can't lean on our own understanding because we look at things the wrong way. Remember what we said at the beginning? We look at things through our earthly eyes. We can't understand why there's heartache in the world. We can't understand why sometimes good things, bad things happen to good people. We, don't, we can't understand it. But there's a reason and a plan behind it all. And it's not always up to us to try to figure out the ways of God when things are going the, the wrong way. We just got to praise Him in the storm. Amen? We have to praise Him in the storm. We have to keep believing in the one that made us and not lean on what we think is right. Because we all feel like there's a way. You know, we preached a sermon about that not too long ago. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lead not unto thine own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In the scripture we're told to trust the Lord with everything we have, everything we are, and to not lean to our own understanding of things. We've already established that. Where we don't need to lean on what we think's right all the time. And it says that he will direct our paths. So whose paths is he going to direct? Ours. Mine. My family's. Yours. He's going to direct our paths. He will set us on the path that we need to go. We only need to trust in him. Amen? Believe you me, I understand that sometimes it is hard to see what God is doing. All right? You ever thought that to yourself? That sometimes it's just hard to understand why God's doing something. We don't understand why our children have to be sick. Right? We don't understand why we have so much divide in this world. Why do we have all this stuff going on around us right now? It's hard for us to understand to see what God's plan is behind all this. But I have to trust in Him. That no matter what's going on around me, I'm going to praise Him in the storm. I'm going to praise Him in the circumstance. I'm going to praise Him in the trials. I'm going to praise Him in the tribulations. Amen. I'm going to continue to praise Him. No matter what's going on. Have you ever been that person... 
It feels like you're becoming so overwhelmed that you all of a sudden, you just say, God, where are you? Lord, I need you. Lord, save me. I'm going to die. Where are you at? And I want to tell you today that there's never been a moment that he hasn't been with you. That you've never had to face anything by yourself. There's never been a moment that you've been alone to withstand the storm. You've never been there by yourself, having to face the storm all alone. He's never left you. And he never will. He's never forsaken you. And he never will. Amen? He is with you in the circumstance. So I encourage you today, whenever you are facing this storm, praise him in the storm. Give him the highest praise. Amen? No matter what it may look like to you. Hear me when I say that. Praise him in the storm. No matter what it may look like to you. Amen? Praise him in the storm and he's going to see you through. Don't let the way it looks with your earthly eyes pull you back and hold you down. Amen? You know, Whitney and I have faced storms together in this thing we call life and marriage. Amen? We have. There have been times we had no idea what was going to happen, what the end result was going to be. We didn't even know what to do. The only thing we could do was pray, right? I'm not, I'm not exaggerating on that. We didn't know how, what to do. We didn't know how things were going to play out. The things that were happening was out of con our control. And I'm somebody that likes to be able to control everything that's around me. I like to be able to know how things are going to play out. I've said that before in sermons. But we knew the one that brings peace. Right? Amen? Amen. There was nothing we could do, but we knew the one that brings peace. We knew the one that calms storms. Chris, Brother Chris, you're talking in past tense. We knew where our help come from. And guess what? We knew back then where our peace comes from. We knew back there, back then where our, our, uh, our help comes from. Amen? And we still know today where our peace comes from. We still know today where our help comes from. We know, as while it's easy to lean on our own understanding, we have to trust and believe in God. Because in those moments, we didn't know what was going to happen. But we know where our help comes from, and we're going to praise Him in the storm no matter what happens. No matter how things turn out, we're going to praise Him in the, Lord, in the storm. We're going to trust in the Lord, amen? No matter what happens. We know that He loves us, and He will be there with us, that there is no separating the love of God from us. Some of us need to realize today that there's nothing that will separate the love that God has for you. That doesn't mean the relationship you have with God won't be strained and stretched to the point where you no longer have a relationship, but He still has love for you. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. You can read that in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 39. If the love of God cannot be separated from us, then why would he abandon us? In times of struggle, in times of difficulty, times of circumstance, why do you think he would leave you then? If none of this stuff above that I just read will separate the love, why is he going to separate himself from you then? Have you ever thought about that? About What about the sparrows that he loves so much that he takes care of? And he loves you way more than them. Amen? He takes care of them. He's going to take care of you. I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to praise Him in the storm. Amen? And I know things look grim sometimes. They look, the, the world we live in, it's a, it's a grim time to be alive. But you must trust the Lord that He is doing everything for your good. Amen? Romans 8, 28. 
And we know all we know that all things work together for good to them that that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Get ready to close out. But he will not leave you. Whoever you are at home, he will not leave you. He will be with you during the circumstance. He will be with you in the storm, the trials, the tribulation. In the madness, there can be peace. Amen? He is with you, and he will not leave you. You need to know that. And just do the best you can to praise God in a storm. I know it can be hard sometimes when everything seems to be coming at you all at one time. But praise him in the storm. Amen? Lord, we love you tonight, God. Lord, we ask that you will touch anyone that's under the sound of my voice at this time, God, that, that if they've known you in the past and they've decided to walk away and not to trust, Lord, that you will bring them back home and that they will remember to praise you in the storm when they're, when they're going through things. And Lord, I ask that anybody else, whether they know you or don't know you, Lord, whatever they may be going through, Lord, that you will show them that you are a present help, that you will help them in their time of need, in their time of struggle, in any kind of situation that they may be facing, that you are still the one that heals, that you can deliver them, Lord, that you love them, and remind them, even though well, the ones that serve you every day, remind them that you still love them as well. Because sometimes we we tend to forget. And Lord, I ask you to just help us to put our focus back on you, Lord. Because when we all put our focus back on to you, other things will start to fall into place. And we thank you, Lord, for that. And we love you, and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And just let me pray. And the church say amen? Amen. amen. But I hope you got something out of this message. So somebody will get ready to stop the camera. But I hope you got something out of this message today. It's very important that we focus on God. That we'll praise Him in the storm when we're going through the worst of worst. Amen? That we, if we focus on the one that can calm the storm, we're going to be okay. Amen? That doesn't mean things ain't going to happen. But if we pay attention and focus on Him, we're going to be good. Amen. We love you guys. God bless you. And we will see you on the next one. Take care.